Hello class, this is Professor Creek. In this video, we'll take a look at an internal factor evaluation matrix, or the acronym IFEM. And in this example, we're looking at Lowe's. Uh, so this is Lowe's home improvement, uh, rather than Lowe's grocery store. Uh, for those who live in Boone, uh, we always have to differentiate the two. Uh, so we're in the home improvement industry and um, doing an IFEM for Lowe's. And what you can see here is I've already got my strengths and my weaknesses listed here. So if you are starting from scratch and um, creating an IFEM for any company, you'd want to uh, look at what the firm is doing well and what the firm is not doing well. And this is different from the external factor evaluation matrix in that when we're, we're dealing with external factors, all those factors should be out of the control of the focal firm, in this case Lowe's. Uh, on the IFEM, which is here, all of these factors listed should be controllable by the company, so by Lowe's in this case. And because of that, there are some key differences in the way we set up this IFEM versus the way we would set up an EFEM. And I'll discuss that as the video progresses here. A um, couple of things that are similar. The weights column, we're always going to assign weights um, based on industry level. So in this case, the industry is probably made up of Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, maybe Ace Hardware. Ratings, on the other hand, are going to be at the firm level. So ratings are only how is Lowe's doing in regards to these factors. Um, the, the sum of the weights must equal one. And so what I like to do before I even begin on my IFEM is I just put in the average weight. So in this case, we're working with um, 10 factors. So uh, 1 divided by 10 is 0.1. So I like to just go ahead and, and put in 0.1 and I'm going to come back and change all of these. But this gives me the sum at the bottom that I'm looking for, right? Remember that on an EFEM and on an IFEM, uh, the, the total sum of all these weights has to equal 1. Okay, 1.1 is not okay. Uh, 0.99 is also not okay. So the next thing we need to do is actually determine how important to the industry is each of these individual factors. And we're going to change the weights up or down depending on how important those are. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to make a little side note here. This IFEM is probably a, a bit shorter than a, a normal IFEM would be. So in most cases, uh, you'd want to see somewhere around 10 factors rather than five. So you'd want 10 strengths and 10 weaknesses. Um, just to keep the video a little shorter, I, I just did uh, five of each in this case. So let's first look at the industry level weights uh, and we'll start here at the first strength. Contactless pickup orders, uh, lockers installed at 12,000 stores since 2020. Um, so obviously that's something that the firm did in response to COVID. And uh, you know, they, they did it quickly. Once COVID started, uh, they got these lockers up. Um, so fairly good job um, and, and something that should be important to the industry as a whole. Um, is it going to make a huge difference? Perhaps not. So maybe that one's slightly above average. We might increase it to a 0.11. Uh, the second strength, Lowe's.com, had a 121% growth in fiscal year 2020. Um, again, I'd say that that's a pretty big factor for the industry. Um, I think COVID pushed a lot of firms to increase online sales. Obviously, Lowe's was able to do that as well. Uh, Home Depot was as well. And so um, certainly an a important factor for 
this home improvement industry. Number three, um, Lowe's had a $153 million tech hub in Charlotte. It's expected to be done at the end of 2021. Um, important, perhaps, for Lowe's, um, but in terms of the whole industry, perhaps that, that one tech hub is less important, uh, especially in comparison to the other strengths listed here. So I'd probably make that one uh, fairly low. Last quarter sales increased uh, nearly 27%. Uh, so that is a, a very big increase. Uh, remember that that's for lows, but we can assume uh, that, that the industry as a whole did pretty well uh, in, in, in recent quarters due to COVID, right? I mean, houses are going up um, at, at an all-time high rate, or, or at least in a, in a, a decade or two high rate. Um, and so I would, I would put this as a fairly high weight as well. Uh, Lowe's is considered to be an essential business during COVID-19 related shutdowns. Uh, I, I think, you know, now that we're into 2021, perhaps that's less important than it would have been this time last year, uh, as there, there seem to be less shutdowns happening now. Uh, so I might actually rate that one a bit lower. And then we'll, we'll move to weaknesses. Uh, so same thing here, we're just seeing how important is this factor in relation to, to the other factors. So the first weakness, low sales are limited to North America. Certainly for the industry, since Lowe's is such a big player, this is an important weakness, not only for Lowe's, but, but for Lowe's competitors as well. Right? If you're a competitor of Lowe's, you're, you're happy <laughs> that they're, they're only in North America. Right? It gives you uh, more market share abroad. Uh, so that's a, a big weight there. Uh, the second one, sales expected to decline by 15% once COVID-19 confinements are over. Uh, so again, a, a pretty big threat, you know, if, if housing sales go down, uh, people aren't stuck at home as much um, doing home improvements, right? Sales are gonna decrease. Um, so that's uh, an important factor that the industry is gonna want to um, try to plan for in the, in the coming months or years. Weakness number three, an estimated 15% of customers refuse to shop at Lowe's due to mask mandates. Um, that that sounds maybe bad, but I don't think it's as bad as as it might sound, um, because they have to shop somewhere, right? And and Home Depot may have the same rules, you know, Ace might have the same rules, and even if they don't, uh, they can still shop online, right? And and so it's important, but especially when we compare it to these others, maybe less important. So I give that one a slightly lower weight. Um, minimum wage hikes cost Lowe's an additional 460 million in 2020. Uh, perhaps that's just an, an average uh, weakness for the industry. Uh, I think you know, in general, uh, minimum wages are starting to to climb a little more quickly uh, than than normal, and uh, the industry as a whole should be affected by that. Uh, so maybe an average weight there. So just leave it at 0.1. And then the last one, corporate locations have been sitting essentially empty since March of 2020. So again, probably not uh, the, the biggest problem, especially when we're considering the industry rather than just lows. Uh, so this will probably be the lowest of all of them. And um, just to make it easy here, right Right now we're, we're above our total of one. So let's just decrease this by 0.06, um, just for the ease of this example, and make this a 0.4, which in turn gives us the total of one. Again, you wanna make absolutely sure that your total of the weights here is a one. And so now that we've got our weights assigned, now we need to do a similar exercise for ratings. 
Um, but remember the ratings, unlike the weights, are done at the firm level. And so we're going to assign a one, two, three, or four. It can only be one of those four numbers um, to each of these. And this is where there's a key difference between the internal factor evaluation matrix and the external. When we look at opportunities and threats in an external factor evaluation matrix, you'll see threes and fours down this whole column. On the internal factor evaluation matrix, that's far less common. So typically what you'll see are threes and fours for strengths and ones and twos for weaknesses. And you know, if you think about that for a moment, you, you might see why that makes sense. So imagine we put a, a one here for this rating. What that would essentially be saying is that we've got this strength listed here about pickup lockers installed at Lowe's, and we thought that was really great, but Lowe's did a bad job at that, <laughs> right? It, it doesn't really make sense. Or if we flip the scenario around, if we had a rating of four down here, what we'd say is Lowe's has this big weakness that they're limited to North America, but they're doing really great at overcoming that weakness, which isn't true, right? They're only in North America. So more commonly, we see ones and twos for weaknesses, and we see threes and fours for strengths. All right, so let's go ahead and assign uh, the ratings here. Uh, first, the contact list pickup lockers. Uh, I think given the times, that's quite good for Lowe's. Uh, again, they were on top of it, did it right away, uh, rating of four. Lowe's.com had 120% growth in 2020. Um, that sounds good, but I think when you look at the competitors and uh, especially when you see 27% increase in sales in just one quarter, perhaps they could have done better. Um, so I'll give them a rating of three for that. Uh, Lowe's, $153 million tech hub, uh, expected to be done soon. Um, you know, I, I don't know, the timing of that is a bit unfortunate, I think. Uh, they started building that uh, before the pandemic hit. I don't think they'll get as much use out of it as they originally intended. So still not bad, could be better. Uh, again, I'll give it a three. Last quarter sales increased by 27%. That's awesome. <laughs> really, really high increase, uh, rating of four. Uh, and Lowe's is considered essential business uh, during COVID-19 related shutdowns. Uh, and especially when we consider how did, how did Lowe's respond to that? You know, we, we can see that up, up here with, with the growth that they've experienced. Uh, so I gave them a rating of four for that as well. Now dropping down to the weaknesses. Uh, low sales are limited to North America. Obviously that, that's a pretty big uh, weakness, especially when you consider uh, what, what some of the competitors are doing abroad. Uh, number two, sales are expected to decline by 15% once COVID-19 confinements are over. Uh, again, big weakness. They're gonna need to really plan what to do uh, about that. Number three, an estimated 15% of customers refuse to shop at Lowe's due to mask mandates. Uh, probably similar to the argument I used before, uh, you know, there, there are ways to overcome that, which they're already doing. Um, so it's a weakness, but maybe not a huge weakness. Uh, give it a two. Minimum wage hikes. Uh, cost lows an additional nearly half a billion in 2020. Uh, this might be one of those weird cases wherein you could assign a three, right? Because this is a weakness. Um, however, the, depending on how you spin it, this could be considered a strength as well, right? M minimum wage hikes, even though they're obviously costing you money, um, could provide better employees as well. Um, and, and so there might actually be some benefit in that so this is one of those situations where you might see a three uh, assigned even for a weakness. And then lastly, corporate locations have been sitting empty since March of 2020. Um, 
when you look at Lowe's as a whole, probably not a huge weakness, right? I'm sure they're still meeting via phone or Zoom or something. Um, and so I'd, I'd rate that perhaps a two. Uh, before we move on, I wanna pause once more and, and just say a couple of things about what's been done so far. So obviously we, we've assigned you know, a bunch of weights and ratings here. And it's worth mentioning that there's no one exactly right answer here, right? If everyone in class put this together, we may end up with similar uh, total weighted scores, which we haven't added up yet. Um, but we're not going to have the same numbers on all of this. And I'm not even, if I were to grade this, I, I might not even take off points because of what these weights and ratings are, right? This exercise is obviously somewhat subjective. And as long as you can defend well why you rated something the way you did or why you gave a weight that you did, that's totally fine with me. What I don't wanna see is just random numbers, um, guesses that you can't back up, then we have a problem. Um, but as long as you have some kind of logic behind why these numbers are the way they are, uh, I'm going to be okay with that. Um, one more thing I should mention is when when you look at these factors, you'll notice that there's a lot of numbers going on and, and we tried to make these as specific as we could. So the more you can include things like numbers and percentages and ratios, um, the better, right? We want these to be as specific as they can possibly be, but it's not always possible. So if you look at number five here under strengths, um, you know, how would you make that more quantitative? You probably can't. And so it's, it's okay if, if they're not all quantitative. Same thing here, sales are limited to North America. Well, that, that's the weakness, right? That there's no way to really quantify that. And so it's okay if some of them um, aren't quantified, but to the greatest extent possible, try to do that. All right. Finishing this up, um, all we've got to do now is calculate our weighted scores. So this is done just like an EFEM. Uh, and I do have a video on the EFEM as well. If you go to my YouTube page, you can find that and watch that. Um, the weighted score is just the weight times the rating. And we can copy that formula down. And same thing here for um, the weaknesses just the weight times the rating. And then you'll notice as I, as I do this, I've already got the formula in here, which just adds up this whole column. And so the five strengths plus the five weaknesses. So as soon as I copy this formula down, it will give us our total weighted score here, which in this case is a 2.64, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so what, what we usually look for on an internal factor evaluation matrix is a score above 2.5. Uh, I mean, a score of three would be better, um, but 2.5 for an IFEM is is pretty good score. Uh, in other words, they have a strong internal position. Um, for an IFEM, we usually see uh, slightly lower scores than we would on an EFEM, and it's due to these ratings that usually are ones and twos for weaknesses. Um, so on the, on the EFEM, where, where we're looking at opportunities and threats, right, we'd see more threes and fours in this area, and so the score gets inflated. Uh, but for an IFEM, which we have here, uh, a score of 2.64 is pretty good. Uh, so I think that's enough for this video. Uh, certainly if you have questions, feel free to, um, to email me and uh, see you next time for the next video.